Yeah, I'm Brother Alex Medeshuk from uh, Riverside, Last California. And uh, yeah, the, the harvest is uh, the end of the age, of each age, what we, we just, just heard. Uh, the, the Jewish age, uh, the gospel age, and of course, it's going to be uh, the harvest uh, after the, or uh, at the end of millennial age. Uh, the difference only between uh, between those <clears throat> between these three, it's uh, those two which uh, brother uh, already spoke. They already uh, concluded, and the harvest uh, it's already in the past. Um, the millennial harvest it's still ahead of us, and what we are waiting what but thanks to uh, the scripture, what the God provided for us, and those brothers, uh, the servants, uh, who gave, uh, who gave uh, a lot of light on, on that harvest as well. Uh, like those in, uh, especially we, uh, we already mentioned with Brother Keith uh, today, uh, Brother Russell during the, the Parusa time, and Brother Johnson uh, during Epiphany time. Epiphany time. So when, uh, as we uh, notice, maybe like uh, from the, the ages, which was uh, right in front of us and during the <clears throat> brother Keith, Keith uh, uh, speaking, look at that pyramid was uh, building. It was started from that uh, Jewish age. And it, we see that in the millennium, it was complete. It's already shown the complete, complete picture of that, uh, that pyramid. And that's what it's all, all about, all this, uh, this timing during this time. And uh, I'm gonna start with the, uh, read the scripture which written it's uh, Revelation 20 verses seven through nine. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, uh, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And verse nine. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That's uh, what actually the, the Bible calls, uh, calls the little season. Uh, we call it just a little bit different, the harvest time, the conclusion of, the, of that uh, millennial millennial age it is uh, scripturally proved that the judgment day uh, the millennium are one and the same period and will last 1000 years the identity of, of this help us to understand more clearly the nature and purpose of judgment day their identity most certainly proves that the judgment day is not doomsday but a salvation day for if they are identical, everything that will happen in the judgment day will happen in the millennium. The testing time will be the millennium in its wide sense, in which the little season at its close is included. What we just read from, uh, from Revelation. This applies that there will be two periods of testing, the millennium it is narrow sense as distinct from the little season and the little, little season itself. Throughout the millennium, as well as during the little season, we are to look for these tests in a variety of ways they will be applied. And there will be a great difference between those of the millennium and uh, as a whole period and those at its closing little season. Uh, one passage that impli implies these differences is Isaiah 65, verse 20. We'll open that and uh, read. 
there shall, shall be no more uh, dance an infant of the days, nor an old man that had uh, not filled his days. For the child shall die as a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. We see that the prophet is talking about uh, two kinds of people during the, the, the millennium, the, the infant and the, the old man. And also, uh, apart from the testing that will come uh, along the lines of external obedience uh, to the external laws and arrangements of the kingdom, the testing circumstances are remarkably described in Matthew 25 ver verses 31 through 45 in the parable of the sheep and goats. Uh, we're not gonna uh, read all of, all of this scripture, but uh, I, I hope that everyone is know uh, this parable. That this parable uh, applies to the millennium is apparent from, the, uh, from its first verse, which describes conditions immediately following the second advent and the Christ taking his seat on his glorious throne, the meditorial kingdom. Mankind's being separated into sheep and goats will uh, constitute the thousand years work of Christ. The sheep placed to the right represent the righteous of that time, those who will then uh, reform, coming more and more into the, the Lord's favor through their doing good from the heart until the end of the thousand years they will be completely in his favor, fully on the right hand, which represent full favor. The goats represent on the left hand. Goats uh, placed on the left hand represent those who externally reform during the millennium, but who neglect to do good from the heart. The old men who have not filled their days with a good and who as a result, a result fall more and more into Lord's disfavor until in the end of the millennium, they will be in his complete disfavor, fully on his left hand. The final test that during the, uh, the little season is briefly described in Revelation uh, 20 verses seven through nine, which uh, I read in the beginning. Here we are told that Satan is loosed from his prison at the end of thousand years. Understanding the bottomless pit to mean error and Satan's being in prison therein to mean that the Lord will leave him during, during the millennium in all the erroneous views that he has had up to its beginning and will not let him understand the true millennial teachings, works, and conditions. We would understand Satan's losing from his prison to mean the Lord's permitting him to learn the millennial teachings, works, and condition after the millennium is over and removing such restraints from him as would prevent his tempting mankind. The divine purpose in permitting the temptation being the final test of all as to fitness or unfitness for eternal paradisic life. God will use the only infallible method adapted to his purpose, test each one as to his heart's attitude toward the, toward the divine law under pressure of temptation. Such we know uh, was his method with Adam and thus with the race in him. Such has also been a method with the angels, Jesus, the church and the great company. And such will also be uh, his method with all other free moral agents. For God, the unobligated giver of life everlasting 
has the right to impose conditions in harmony with which his gift may be received and enjoyed. Even as any other unobligated, unobligated giver has such a right. Thus we recognize the propriety of God's testing as to the fitness or unfitness for everlasting life. Satan's intentions in uh, verse eight, same Revelation 20, is not to test them for such a purpose, but rather to deceive them. And again, bring them under his control. He's going to the four, uh, four quarters of the earth for tempting purposes. Seems to mean that he will seek to deceive the human family as will then be socially organized in four classes. The ancient worthies, the youthful worthies, the Jews, and the Gentiles. Those among these whom he, he will deceive are Gog and Magog, as we read in the scriptures. Those Jews and Gentiles who as the old man will during the millennial not have filled their days with good works. According to this, none of the ancient worthies and youthful, youthful worthies will lightly give way to temptations, though sorely tried in them. The battle here referred to is one of the principle, not of physical warfare. Great numbers will be involved in it on Satan's side, according to this verse. They going up on the breadth of the earth, verse nine, implies that these deceived ones will make a most thorough and universal effort to bring all of the others of mankind to their side. They are spoken of as a compassing the ca camp of the saints about and the beloved city. We would ask ourselves, how could person so generously treated as this will be during the millennium by the ancient and youthful worthies? be brought to rebel against their benefactors? The answer is, since in the in heart they will be selfish, their selfishness can be, can be manifested through deception by Satan into ruining their benefactors, even as history and the Bible abundant, abundantly testify has so far been the case. How will this deception be successfully worked by Satan? Several facts will help us to visualize this matter. Let us first of all remember this, the Jewish and uh, as the Jewish at the gospel ages ended by the time stages lapping into their succeeding ages. We may reasonably think that the millennium will so do. Otherwise, we could not claim for Christ and church a full thousand years reign. The lap lapping began in 1874, reached other stages in 1878, 1881, 1914, and will still reach other stages at various days before the kingdom will be fully set up on this side of the veil which will be some years. Other facts that will help us uh, to understand uh, the mode of operation on the part of the deception are Satan's subtlety and deceivableness of selfish heart. With these three facts in mind, we may uh, readily see how the deception may work. We know that our Lord invisible return happened in October, 1874. And thousand years onward will bring us to October 2874. When the millennial, uh, millennium 
will begin to lap into the next age. Then other lapping will set in a correspond, uh, corresponding to those of the gospel age, lapping into the millennium like 1878, 81, 1914, etc. As the first stage of the uh, Satan's begin October 1874, so the first stage of his losing will probably begin in October 2874. Probably by um, probably for three and a half years, he will be studying the situation and thus becoming out of the bottomless pit, a bottomless pit. Error as respects the millennial teaching work and conditions. As in April 1878, Christ Fur began to use his great power millennially, though without using it. He had had it before. So Satan in April 2878 will probably begin to work off his deception plan between 2874 and 2878 after studying the situation. He will, uh, through his demon associates, probably spread the following thought, which will appeal to the selfish. The thousand years ended in 2874. You were promised the kingdom for your own direct administration at their end. But now several years have passed and the ancient and youthful worthies are now not giving it to you. They do not intend to give it to you. Selfishly, they seek to retain it so as to lord it over you. Will you stand for it? This appeal will meet no response in those who from the heart millennially turn, turn to and serve the Lord. We may be sure as the year pass on that Satan will make different changes in his appeals to seduce them from their loyalty. But the faithful will overcome him in every temptation because their characters will have been made perfect through their good conduct during the millennium. But not so would the temptation be met by those who fail to develop a righteous and good character during the millennium. In spite of their external obedience uh, to the kingdom arrangement, Satan appeal would be, uh, would be met with responsiveness by, the, by their selfish hearts. At first, his, uh, his suggestion would be a matter of study to them. Then as days, weeks, and months increase into years, and these in turn into decades, their selfish characteristic being var variously appealed to by the subtle deceiver. They would give way to him and the more selfish would first talk uh, of the ancients and youthful worthies as usurping their rights. This talk would presently become an agitation that would find increasing responsiveness from uh, selfish hearts until worldwide, all of this class would get together to take some concerted action, perhaps first by a petition for the de delivery of the kingdom to them, being sent by them to the worthies. Whatever form it may take, it will at the best or the behest of Christ and the church be refused. This refusal will lead the evil ones to more and more pressing demands until all of them will be in open revolt to take the power from the workers by force. While we know of no scripture which teaches that this will in their uh, revolt murder the ancient and youthful workers and therefore should not teach it dogmatically. 
yet from the fact that all of the vortices, though perfect, will, will die at about the same time and thereupon get a sp uh, spirit nature for everlasting heavenly existence, we can readily see that they will probably be murdered by the wicked. Though the Lord is abundant, abundantly able to give them their change through another exit from this earth. But whatever the form of sin the wicked will commit against the worthies, the visible uh, repre uh, representatives and soldiers of the invisible Christ, head and body, one thing is certain they will lead on by Satan, become under the final test guilty of demonstrable and open sin, and thus prove themselves unworthy of enjoying forever the gift of life con uh, conditional in such enjoyment on, on sinless, sinlessness. Thus the test will demonstrate the righteous as worthy of life and unrighteous as unworthy of, of life. And as we re read in the conclusion of that verse nine, and the fire will come down from heaven and devour them. This is the end and conclusion of the harvest of the millennium. Thank you for your attention and God bless all of us.